Now, on to the secondary pollutants. Ozone is created in the atmosphere. The full chemical story is extraordinarily complex, but a simple version involves three precursors, nitrogen oxide, carbon monoxide, and volatile organic compounds. When combined with sunlight, this mixture creates ozone. These volatile organic compounds can be anything from gasoline that evaporates from the gas tanks of cars to isoprenes, organic compounds released by trees. Ozone chemistry is surprising. In general, when one mixes oxidizers and hydrocarbons, one expects to reduce the amount of oxidizer. When the origin of ground-level ozone, also known as smog, around Los Angeles was first discovered in the 1950s, it was a big surprise to chemists. A mixture of oxidizers and hydrocarbons is being cooked in the atmosphere to produce ozone, an even more powerful oxidizer. It's worth mentioning that the ozone layer in the stratosphere is something we want. It protects the surface of the Earth from UV that would otherwise sterilize the planet. On the other hand, ozone in the lower atmosphere is something we do not want, because ozone breaks down essentially any organic compound it touches from the surface of your lungs to the plastic parts on your car or the growing parts of plants. Stratospheric ozone, good. Surface ozone, bad. Controlling ozone is complicated because the amount of ozone produced depends in a sensitive way on the mixture of the precursors. In some conditions, cutting NOx emissions can actually lead to an increase in ozone. Perhaps because of this complexity, the US has made only very moderate progress on reducing ozone exposure in cities roughly a 20% reduction since 1980.